make that climb in the very last week. We are ready to go into this one. Yep, and Aurelia, no surprise there. Banned away by Golden Guardians. 3-0 on the champion is Piglet, so it's good to see that taken off the table. Cassio, another huge pick for Huni, who is 2-0 on the champion. And when having shown how good they are on these champions, they are now getting banned out, really. And I think until Clutch can show that they have other picks that are kind of this similar style that they can also win on, these are going to remain permabans. So it's up to Clutch to prove, hey, we have these other mages. We have these other aggressive bot laners that we can play the similar style and have similar performances on. And interestingly, Golden Garden picking the exact same three bands that Liquid levied against them yesterday. Very similar stuff out of the Clutch gaming side as well versus Golden Guardians here. Well, Sandra was successful over against Huni in the top lane when he played Rise just yesterday. Impact had a pretty decent game there. Then we'll see Golden Guardians hovering over the Karthus that they've been known to pick up some wins on, but not just yet. Looks like Rex will be their first pick, and they'll grab a second one soon after. Yeah, so Rex Eye coming through. I'll be interested to see what Keystone contract actually elects to go for. Have been seeing some uh, Hail of Blades, have been seeing Press the Attack, Conqueror still in there, even Electrocute showing up. So a lot of different options, but it is a there. very strong jungler. And we know this is going mid lane very likely now for Frog. And you would say Karthus can be flexed to jungle, but not when the Rek'Sai is there. No. <laughs> and I'm not expecting this to go bot lane for Deathly or anything crazy like that. So nope. a bit of a blind. Karth this year, which could be considered fairly risky, seeing as Lissandra could go top, and and there are matchups which can be pretty difficult here for the Karthus. Yep, Froggy seems to say that he can match all of them, so Nocturne going to be joining the fray. Of course, that spell shield quite good against Requiem if something goes down elsewhere, and also it means side lane pressure. We've been kind of talking about Huni uh, being someone who's got to kind of lift the burden here for Clutch Gaming. He's got to be one of the carries, and Nocturne, of course, very good at going to silence, keeping people alive, so it could be really valuable here. Both supports grab that with Alistair and Tom Kench. It's very interesting, you know, and I'm not even sure if Demonte will be willing to play this on stage because it is such a risky pick, but I have heard of a lot of people saying that Kassan is a very strong matchup into Karthus. You know, having the Q magic damage shield and then post six being able to actually jump in, assassinate him, and then get outside of the lay waste in that E zone. So not sure if they want to go for any extreme sort of counter pick or if we're just going to see something fairly standard along the lines of an Orianna, yeah. uh, as we have been or seeing a lot that of. Or of course. Mm -hmm. I'd we'll like to see right now as the top laner ban is coming through on the Clutch Gaming side. I would feel, actually, tell me how you feel about it. I feel like Lissandra could survive York pretty easily. Uh, AoE the ghouls and just jump out of the cage whenever she wants. So I, I think it's a matchup that, that is uh, harder for York in the early levels. But once you hit a cow, I think you just don't care about Lissandra anymore. And you just can kind of start walking at her over and over. <laughs> just, maybe maybe not in competitive plays. You have to give more respect to a jungler. But but I do feel it's a, it's a fairly favorable matchup for uh, the Yorick, you know, okay. once you're, you're getting a little bit of itemization in there. But that being said, you know, nothing has looked favorable for York in the LCS. It's still winless. It, I believe, has not picked up a single game in, we're probably going on 8-10 plays at this point without a win. Sure. Well, right now you're seeing more top lane bans coming through on the Clutch Gaming side as they know Haunter has not picked his champion just yet. They have definitely okay. a lot of space. And with only the Draven, Aurelia, and I guess you can say Jace banned away for bot lane champions, it's going to be Jinx picked up right here. Uh, sorry, the Callisto Force of Ban, but put out on their side so that they can grab the Jinx without getting bullied. And Jinx has been looking really good in the LCS. Wild Turtle picked up a couple of wins. Apollo uh, bringing it out yesterday and winning as well. Those are the only three games that I can think of. I do believe it has won all the games it has been brought out in. A lot of these games are going late in the LCS, and Jinx certainly is a monster at that point in the game. But even yesterday, Jinx being played into Vayne, who is admittedly one of the weaker laners, we did see Apollo get a significant CS advantage and has been able to utilize the range advantage to be able to get a lot done. That being said, there's a ton of dive on this comp. You have Lissandra, Nocturne, Alistar, everyone flying in. If you get caught out by those members, if Tom Kench is not there to perfectly protect you, mm -hmm. the Jinx could die in a hurry. Well, thankfully that Tom Kench is going to be around. They're going to do their very best to keep her alive. And Golden Guardians, do you believe it? It's a team fight comp here. Jinx with Tom Kench in the bot lane, keeping her alive. Orn yeah. for top, it's a team fight comp, buddy. I know it's to be true. And of course, still some early pressure is there. You've got the Rek'Sai, who I think is a very good early game jungler, I believe should be able to do the Nocturne. Uh, I think you can actually just tunnel away from the fear and, and go fast enough away that you won't keep that tether alive. And, uh, Demonte on a very signature pick here in this Syndra is going to do his best to try to beat up on Frog's blind pick Karthus. Yeah, I mean, this feels like really a lot of scaling here on the Golden Guardian side. I do think that 
you know, when you're picking Jinx, Karthus, Orn, you're looking to go late. Orn adding even more scaling potential there uh, for the Jinx, for the Karthus, being able to add in those upgraded items once you're getting to those later levels, 13, 14, 15, etc. You can be upgrading the items of your teammates, and that is going to be very powerful at that stage. I do think that there is more ability you know, in the earlier stages to try to force their will on their opponents, though, on the side of Clutch Gaming with Lissandra, with the Syndra, as well as the Nocturne, especially yep. post six. There's a lot of engaged potential, a lot of ability to catch people out in side lanes and try to play around You're splitting up this squad instead of just, you know, engaging into a 5v5 where you're expecting the Golden Guardians comp to shine. Well, let's see if that does happen, or if the side lane pressure can come through here. Lots of high damage output. Almost any one of these champions can carry. The Lissandra, the Syndra, or the Kai'Sa can be really, really huge threats here. Golden Guardians, very frontline focused with dual backliners of Deathly and Frog in a comp that I think suits them and their play style quite well. Uh, we saw again yesterday Golden Guardians misstepping, being a little bit too aggressive, especially in that bottom lane, and Ole got himself caught out. We want to see those kinds of mistakes uh, turned around. Keep in mind, last time these teams met, it was Ole going for Orn charges against Piglet and Vulcan and getting punished time and again by that Alistair. If those mistakes can be cleaned up, the Golden Guardians can look pretty good here, moving up to seven wins if they can take it. Yeah, it should be very interesting. It is going to be Conquer starting up here for the Rek size, so that does answer that. Will be some nice bursts early on. We do have a sideline report with Avli and Anero. Please take it away. Thanks, Freak. Anero, Golden Guardians had a pretty lo tough loss against TSM yesterday. Uh, so how are you guys going to bounce off and take today's game against Clutch? Yeah, so yesterday, uh... There's always that risk when you're doing these things, it's like the innate thing of you're picking to scale and go late, that if a team picks early and plays well, they're gonna beat you. And everyone goes in knowing that, that that's a possibility and you're hoping the other team doesn't do it. They did it, so good on them. Like I'm actually really impressed with what TSM did yesterday and I have a lot of respect for them doing that and performing with it. So for us, we knew that was a risk going in and we took it, it failed and that's something we have to accept. So we're moving on. It's not like a, a super hard Lars for us or anything. Well, thank you and best of luck to you guys today. Back to you guys. So giving a lot of respect over to TSM and their ability to play early. But here we are again on Sunday. Golden Guardians certainly drafting for late. Once again, we will see if Clutch is the team to kind of turn up the pace on them once more and try to close it out. And, and to an arrow's credit, I do think that both TSM and Clutch have been teams where I think their late game has been sort of questionable. And North American uh, overall League of Legends has been a bit slower to close out games. And so... It is a good region to try to scale for late because right now teams haven't been closing things out. So Golden Guardians attacking their local meta in, in a way that I think you actually want to use the phrase metagame. The, the LCS's metagame is a bit slow, and so keying into that I think is pretty smart, and we'll see so far Golden Guardians uh, in their second year in the LCS are in playoff position. Tied for fifth right now. The jungle might be fighting pretty soon as Contracts and Lyra spot each other. Spike fight coming through. One more auto attack, and it's going to go over, but the fear is going to come across. And Lissandra here as well. Cinder finds the stun. A lot of damage coming out there. Not a way out. First blood goes over to Lyra. Yeah, Contracts so focused on if he could take the scuttle that he wasn't thinking about if he should take the scuttle. All the soul lanes are collapsing. You know, that is a, a very risky play to go for. He commits to it, he does get it, but it's first blood over, it's red buff over. You can see Syndra is roaming, you can see Lissandra is roaming. This was in vision of the Golden Guardians, but Contracts is fully committed to it, and to his credit, he wouldn't have the E, so he would have had to just try to flash out over the wall immediately, but that may have been the play yeah. that he should be going for. And now, you know, putting himself in a bit of a tough spot, giving that first blood already over to Lyra is gonna be a nice advantage for them. Uh, does let Contract save his flash. Maybe next time around he'll get away from it. Also want to point out that Froggen, um, what's the most Froggen thing you would do if your mid laner runs over? You take the enemy Raptors. Froggen took the small Raptors away from Lyra during that fight. <laughs> He's got some extra CS, a little bit extra gold. Thank you, Observers. Froggen did that. That is the most Froggen thing I have ever seen. And so Lyra's going to be like, wait, where'd my chickens go? I mean, Froggen is a player that I think is, is very much about guaranteed advantages, right? And, and it's a smart way to play the game. You know, there is some inherent risk every time you go for a gank or you try to go and, and match that 3v3 fight. If you can do that and not have there be any danger, hey, that is a guaranteed small edge that you are going to get. And that is one of the reasons that Froggen is so consistent in the late game is that he always takes these small advantages. He always you know, tries to maximize farm. And thus, when he's playing scaling champions, he's going to be a monster in those later game stages. But something we haven't had a chance to talk about just yet is the fact that Huni is actually playing Klepto Lissandra. So we are seeing a lot of this on champions such as Vladimir. We are seeing this on, you know, e even Victor Toflin. That was pretty popular, but not a lot on Lissandra because uh, 
people are so into going Aftershock. It makes you so much more tanky when you are playing this pseudo frontline style. So Huni will be a lot more squishy. When he's diving into the back lines, he can be focused down. If you are going for an offensive ultimate, you're very vulnerable to just being burst out yourself. So yeah. he is going to be getting more gold in these early stages and kind of escalating his scaling on, on that regard, you know, just farming off of Hanser. But we'll see if it pays off later on in these team fights. Yeah, of course, be a little bit hard to track. We'll do our very best. Maybe he gets a stopwatch he wouldn't have had otherwise, or a Zonia Zaf he wouldn't have gotten regardless. And Look for that one as Lyra stops by a ward, and Froggen should definitely know he's around, taking as long as he possibly can, tanks a Q, and makes Lyra walk into a lay waste on the way out. So, yeah, 80 damage is only penalty for that. Good enough for him. And I uh, did see, of course, earlier on that Contracts had invaded very aggressively. We saw him get the bottom scuttle. We saw him take mm -hmm. the bottom side Krug camp away, so unperturbed by the first blood, and having his flash still up meant he felt safe to invade, and did so pretty well. Ole taking some damage, looks for a trade back and a piglet, not gonna land the Tongue Lash. And it's a pretty equal bot lane, plus 5 CS the Golden Guardian side. They have had the push lead, and some of that is they felt safe because of Contracts pushing into that bottom side. Lyra taking some revenge chickens, but otherwise still fairly close on gold and items for the two junglers. I think it would be interesting to see if anyone wants to make that early move. Nice that was, yeah, really nice. Okay, flash. He's gonna go for the flash, lots of damage here, but is gonna be out of range of Froggen now. And there will be flash for flash, but that's a trade usually you're willing to take as the Rek'Sai. Yeah, definitely the case as well. They got out the heal, right? So it is the two for one summoners. That is the jungler expending his. And this is going to give them that mid lane priority. So we may see Rek'Sai just starting up that early ocean, which would be massive if he can get this. His bot lane is pushing. They have mid lane prio. This is a pre six minute ocean dragon, which helps out your, your laning phase so much, especially you know, for someone like Hanser, where you are going to be on the back foot in those early stages in a yeah. tank into ranged matchup, you're just going to be able to regen through. Okay, jumping forward, they're going to fear him, but sick. the W is going to make him a tanky for a little while, but there's the root, has to flash away, just gets six there as Hanser, as he runs away. Now the ult to do some damage and wave clear. The other half what? somewhere else. That seemed like a misclick, but yeah. off it goes, and he's going to lose some of this wave. He has to run back and maybe TP back to lane. Maybe redirected that onto the minimap by accident. That might have been a minimap click or something along those lines. Uh, I certain. think that ult was was going to be for wave clear. I'm not really sure why he would have actually pulled it off. You know, e even if Lyra has spell shield up or something like that, it doesn't really matter if you hit him. Yeah. Uh, but Contract's moving up, trying to back him up, and it will be flashed down for Hauntzer, but. As I said, when you have Ocean as a tank, you can actually sick back under the turret. You can absorb all the harass and just regen it up in between waves. And it, it gets to a point where Lissandra is not going to be able to push you out whatsoever. So that's going to come a lot more early than it otherwise would. And right now, they're instead pushing for the jungle instead, as Hanser is still going to pull his recall off. And a, a TP comes back into mid lane for Frog. And the fear comes in, and the rev up will be stolen. So though they don't kill Hanser or get more than his ult and his flash, they do get to take the red buff away. and. That's more penalty to give over. Level 5 on Nocturne to the 4 of this Rek'Sai, and they've put Contracts down a little bit. Still flashes on the Rek'Sai, trading that summoner with the mid laner. Look to get the red buff back now themselves, and you can see Demonte cheating down to this side of the map, but Ole's already here. So you can see the entire team coming over. They know what kind of evade is happening. And Demonte has no summoners, so he can't really face check in here. You can definitely get taken down if you do so. So it will just be a trade of red for red, and you know, the pressure on the top side exchange for the dragon on the bot side, and certainly in less clutch can make much more of that, you know, and, and start getting kills or, or big farm advantages against Hauntzer, you are really going to favor taking that Ocean Dragon. Uh, it's going to be helping out all of these Golden Guardian members quite a lot. The next one will be an Ocean as well. I think it's certainly less important than the first, but still nice to be taking away from your opponents. Okay, well, still turning resources back and forth. The game's still about 700 gold apart. First Blood being most of that, that's being a small bit of it otherwise, as most lanes are trading farm fairly equally. And in fact, the mid laner is going to be identical in numbers right here at 79. Froggen puts another Trinket Ward down to see if he can take these chickens for himself. Demonte is going to spot him, but not going to stop him. So Froggen will now take an entire full chicken camp by himself by the end of this one. Yeah, beautiful. I know, he's farming on Karthus. This is, this is peak Karthus right now. And speaking of peak play, had the pulverize onto the Jinx, but Tom Kench doing his job and Wing a champion. Yeah, I mean, honestly, Golden Guardians think they're going to be very happy with how this game is going. You can see Huni on the minimap kind of cheating down towards mid lane. He is looking for a potential dive onto Froggen, but Froggen was playing towards the bottom side of the map, knowing that Lissandra is missing from the top side. He's going to play it safe, and nothing will come from it, so... 
know, sitting here, it's actually Hanser in the, in the tank versus carry matchup. He is the one up on farm. The Jinx is ahead on farm in the bottom lane as well. Your mid lane is farming even. I think they're going to be feeling very happy about their position in this game, and it certainly feels like it is more on clutch to be the ones trying to push the pace, trying to utilize their playmaking, and Lyra now at six with this Nocturne, going to be looking for an opportunity to go in on the bot lane. But of course, it's going to be hard if Ole has thick skin available, and of course, you can always chomp up the Jinx. They would have to go for the Tom Kench, but maybe they can combo him down. They're going to try now, towards the Jinx, but again, the headbutt pulverized onto the Tom Kench, but still flash to get them to safety. Averna Summoners on both sides here, and now the turnaround for Requiem. Jinx Rock is going to do a little bit of damage, but we can't get Rek'Sai in unless the Q lands, and it does not. So a trade of Summoners, a trade of Volts, no kills. Vulcan, though, honestly, really well played by him, I do have to say. You know, going to actually knock Ole away there so that the ultimate can be more effective. And that goes from really something where maybe they would have just gotten Tom Kench's flash to getting four summoners down from the bot lane. Heal flash, exhaust flash, all down from this Golden Guardian's bot lane. So hopefully four clutch that will alleviate a little bit of the pressure that is coming in right now. As you can see, even two turret plates have fallen to the Jinx. And that's going pretty well for them. And that bot lane, you can see the CS lead also growing. It's plus 17 with a wave to be killed. So maybe more like plus 10. But yeah, those two plates, certainly 160 gold apiece certainly matters here. And they can see that Pope going in towards Piglet, definitely playing around that rocket range. And again, always knows as long as Ole's far away, he can take those shots. And if Headbutt Pulverize comes in, a quick devour and there's no problem at all. It's mana efficient. But if it wasn't a Tom Kent, this was Leona, you can't make those kinds of plays. Yeah, you certainly can. And I think they're utilizing it well. I also do like how they're using lethal tempo. One of the fun things you can kind of do with that keystone is you land one rocket or one little bit of poke onto the champions, you back out of turret range, and then you can actually utilize that attack speed to get chip damage on the turret itself. Big chunks of damage there. Picked it really pushed out, and that is, of course, Rocket's flash almost field. up. I don't know if it's going to come up before that recall finishes, but the ult is very close. Yeah, yeah not quite. In time, but infinite sustain, of course, quite useful now. as well. Yeah, yeah. A couple seconds off from getting to at least force uh, another recall, if not, maybe actually get the kill picked up. But a second, pretty early Ocean Drake. Uh, not nearly as valuable as the first, but still does matter, and it's even more sustained for these laners. You can even see that this board is up in CS the top lane. Yeah, I mean, you just can't push a tank out when they have an early ocean. You, it negates all of your early laning advantage there for Lissandra, and even you can see how Deathly is playing, how heavily he's utilizing rocket form. That is something that you can do for free with an ocean dragon. You're not going to run out. Uh, whereas otherwise, you would certainly be running out of mana there uh, much more frequently. So it's allowing him to play with safety, to get additional poke down on the champions, on the turret as well, with the additional range from the rockets. So uh, Golden Guardians, I think, is making very good use uh, of these neutral objectives that they have grabbed. And the items are coming through right here. A finished Storm Razor for Piglet, which I very, very much disagree with. Uh, it is still gold inefficient by itself. Its stat profile is not bad. Both attack damage and attack speed are things that Kaisa cares about. Yes, the item did get buffed uh, just back in either 9.5 or 9.4, but I think it's still a weak first item. But maybe I can be corrected here if it turns out to be really great. But it multiplies other Energizer effects. He's not even got fleet footwork. Meanwhile, though, Ole going to be found out back in his own jungle. The sun's going to land. Thick skin not going to mean too much. They should have the damage to kill him. He's going to let himself go ahead and drop down and die. Piglet on the board now. 2-0 clutch game. Yeah, and they can make good on that earlier gank from Lyra where those summoners were forced out. Ole caught out by one of those wards. They spot him. He has no flash. He has no exhaust. No way out of there. So Piglet able to grab that early kill. And it's very interesting because I do agree. Stormraiser is somewhat inefficient as a first buy, but it's getting a lot of popularity actually around the world is being picked up on these Kaisas. So here it is one more time. Ole spotted out an easy kill there. No one in range to really help him. Froggen has just base jungler on the top side of the map. There's no reason for your Jinx to try to walk over and even help in that situation. So that's sometimes the price of playing support, but here comes the dive. A flash engage, a ton of CC just layered in and the ults come through. That's a kill and sorry, Tom Kench can't be there in time. 3-0 Clutch Gaming pulling the trigger in the mid game. And that's a shutdown actually going over to the Syndra because it was a farm bounty that was on Frog in there. 450 gold shutdown. Going to be grabbed up. He was farming so highly. Going to get that extra bonus gold as a result. Nice roam there from Hooney. That's the kind of proactive play you want to see them making every time Lissandra ult is up, every time Nocturne ult is up. These guys want to be looking for plays. Shutting down the Golden Guardians, putting pressure onto them. Okay, nice pickups right here. And you can see this game is now 700 gold ahead for Clutch despite the turret plates, despite the laning phase advantage. Drake's 
turning into extra farm over time, but still a very close game. Keep in mind, and I still think Golden Guardians have really solid scaling for these team fights later on. They're going to find an engage on the Piglet. Requiem there. Can't even get the assist, so he's killed down too quickly in the flash. Looking for the knockup, and they're going to find a blast cone to the wall, but Vulcan is flashless. A headbutt by the second, but it's certainly going to be Jinx picking up one. Definitely now on the board as well, and Golden Guardians back in the lead. Yep, and they're pushing down on bottom lane. They could try to grab first turret there as Froggen is trying to rush against Huni to get it. That bottom lane turret is much lower, so you would expect this is theirs. If they give up first turret with contracts in the area, that would be pretty silly. Uh, it should be theirs, though. One more auto will do it. 450 over to Frog, and he's still feeling pretty rich on this one. The scaling continues. Rod of Age is already done. I do like the extra defense to survive a Syndra all in. Yep, I think that's a, a really good way to point it out. You know, you have the stopwatch, you have the Roa, uh, gonna help you survive. And Contrax did a good job. He's actually spotting them with the Tremor Sense. You can see over the wall. That's why the Golden Guardian's bottom lane is walking over here. Piglet walks straight into him. The TP already coming out from Monster, so they are fully committing to this play. And despite the fact the second half of the ultimate doesn't hit, He's already been tagged for the slow and the assist, and they can donate this kill over to Deathly. Definitely the correct target to give it to. But an answer up in this side of the map with the top lane pressure. They got the Rift Trail. They shoved down the mid lane, and so the pressure still continues, and we still have a very, very close game between these teams. Clutch Gaming came in on the outside in and had a hard schedule, and they're doing the very best, but they're picking up a chance at a win right here against Golden Guardians. They ease their remaining opponents and would tie for sixth or seventh by doing so. GGS coming in though, looking pretty solid this week. A rough loss to TSM, but they have control of their own destiny and they can keep making this play forwards. Yeah. Both separating. And you can see that Clutch is trying to posture for these aggressive plays and, and their purchases are actually showing you that they want to play aggressively as well. Triple stopwatch bought up on the Clutch side for a lot of these playmakers, these guys that are going to try to get aggressive. They want to be able to dive in, utilize that stopwatch to go for an otherwise too risky dive where you can reset turret aggro or perhaps negate a Karthus ultimate coming in. These are things that are very, very effective early on. And they know they want to continue pushing. They want to continue to try to get the advantages where they can. Getting this Mountain Dragon would give them some additional access to the Baron later on, which could give them a way to close out. A stolen to the Monte, a Nocturne ult popped in. The TP cannot be canceled. Asana in the front line. Here comes the dive. We're going to pick up that Jinx, no problem. But the first is going to find contracts. One for zero so far to Clutch Gaming. Demonte slowed down. Got a box out for the Rocket. Nice by Vulcan. The blocks one out. Now the Haunter is in. Finds a knockout. Finds that kill. One for one in the team fight as they both lost the top lane or jungle champion, or I should say frontline champion overall. It was Rek'Sai and the Alistair, will there be a re-engage? Not yet for Huni, and that claw's now on cooldown. Piglet clears a ward back to the four on four, still sitting around this river, though. Double Ocean, though, helping GGS out here a lot. They're gonna regen right back up, and now they're on to the dragon, starting this up, but it's much going. Good Ole gets the shield, he's running low on health, so we're staying alive, watch out for the Mountain Drake. Health is gonna be high enough, but look at the possible re-engage, still a four on four, definitely shooting the Drake. Let's it reset. Recall's coming through. Again, the Ocean Drake mattering quite a lot. Yeah, and Contracts now has respawned. He's running down. It looks like Cluster making the call to give over the Dragon. So three straight Dragons going to be going the way of Golden Guardians and they continue their march forward with these neutral objectives. Okay, triple Drake right here in the gold still close. Makes you feel like Golden Guardians are coming out ahead of this one. Still going to farm on these big carry members. Still feels like any of these dives could work later on. Watch that fight again. Yeah, if this is one more time, the TP coming in very early on there from Pony. He has to self fault though. Has to be very, very careful about getting burst out. Contracts, though, knocked up, interrupted there by Vulcan on what looked like would have been a tunnel from him. But Vulcan then, the flash knockup from Haunter onto him. They're able to trade back the kill. It is a disengage, though, that eventually does lead into another Mountain Dragon here for the Golden Guardians. Hans is still saying his lane up against Huni, who sadly does not have the same mana regen anymore and mm -hmm. gonna have a harder time pushing him out, as you kind of mentioned, weathering the storm. And uh, yeah, he's got MR now. He's got that Abyssal Mask and Merc Treads, and it looks pretty safe here for Hanser going towards the Sunfire Cape next. And he's already level 12, right? So, you know, a couple more levels, he's gonna be starting to, to donate over these upgrades to his teammates. They are getting to that stage where you're going to see the Molten Edge coming through for Deathly, who's already on two items. He has his IE in Rapid Fire. And every time you throw in one of those upgrades, that's essentially around a 1,000 gold worth of value uh, getting tossed over to your team. So just reaching that late game stage, reaching those higher levels, is going to be very, very big for Hanser. And I do think we're in a state, you mentioned the Rapid Fire Cannon in for drinks. I think we're actually in a state where the Zeal upgrades are all fairly comparable and you can kind of mm -hmm. pick the one you actually want. I think Rapid Fire is probably correct here. You're not 
hitting several melee champs at the same time, which lowers the hurricane value. If you want to get shots off outside of Cinder ult range, you don't want to always have to rely on Tom Kench. I think Thunder could have been usable, but this is still good for its own reasons. Yeah, and I always feel like against a fairly squishy team, being able to get the one-off rocket form rapid fire crit is very, very valuable. One of those onto a Syndrome, one of those onto a Nocturne may actually completely discourage them from taking a fight, and that has a lot of intrinsic power itself. So yeah. it is at a pretty good state where it's very much, I think, flavor and, and kind of choosing for your play style. And I, I do think for Jinx, especially with Rocket Form, that fire makes a lot of sense. You're going to see him just simply running around clearing in the mid lane wave. It makes it even easier to kill wards as well. It doesn't even consume the Rapid Fire buff. But Ole always sitting around babysitting. We've got Vulcan trying to clear the wards out, and Feel safe enough to do so as these will drop off back and forth. It gives some time for Clutch Gaming to push up. You can see that aggressive Trinket Ward. Hooney walks in and sweeps into the other wards that might be around. We know that there's no vision now around this mid lane on the Golden Guardian side. And that makes it feel a little bit safer. Oh, they couldn't get that one in time. Second Sweeper burn. There we go. And you can see Piglet out in the side lane. They're trying to get enough farm out of this Kai'Sa. But Hanzo looking for an engage. Fell shielded though and dodged away. Nothing doing on that ultimate. Nice try by Hanzo, but gets absolutely nothing. Honestly, even if he hits it and there's no spell shield, I think they get nothing from that. No one was even close enough to really follow up, so uh, kind of a bit oh. of wishful thinking there, but it's counter engage now. Back on towards Ole, gonna get fear, but will they burst down the Tom Kench? They're certainly gonna try and get the shield on. Gets a bit low, the sound of the back line, Carlos ult on as well. Lyra a bit low, spell shield, but no problem. Rexlet comes in, stop with a stopwatch. 1 0 for the center play continues. Hawthorne half HP, looking for the re engage. It's Froggen down towards Vulcan. That's gonna be enough. Lays waste to the back line, and Lyra's at 5 HP. He's gotta keep running. Can they find him? There's no rocket, but is there a flash? Puni forced out from the file as well. It's again a one for one support for jungle, just like last time. Yeah, one for one trade, but it's a stopwatch as used by both Huni and Lyra, as well as their flashes. So a more costly fight, I would say, for Clutch. Spending a lot of those resources, Lyra barely escaping. Was critical that he did get out with a good stopwatch and flash, though. Otherwise, definitely gets the reset, and I think that fight turns into a disaster as Jinx gets excited, and that moves speed can mean a lot in the team fights. And right there, double demolish support plus top winner. How fast that turret falls down. They get a turret for the one for one. Yep, so here this is one more time, straight in onto Olay, but he is able to get the gray health off, pops the thick skin, surviving there, and then actually watching over onto Lyra. Stopwatch is gonna be used right here. The spell shield is used on the card. This ultimate, he's sitting at solo health, gets a triumph heal, flashes over the wall, barely able to escape. One more auto would have done it from Deathly. That probably gives him the speed up to maybe take down another member or two. But either way, still, Golden Guardians do trade kills. They get the turret. They take more resources from their opponents in that fight, and it's feeling to me like this game is moving more and more in the direction of Golden Guardians. As you can see, those upgrades now coming through for Orin. You hit 13. Two of yep. those upgrades now over on the Haunter. That's why he went for the Sunfire Cape there, and uh, you can see right here those two Double items. Upgrades. Yeah, he's got to feel really good about this one. And so I agree with you that five on five team fighting looks really Golden Guardians favorite, and they're at sort of their first wave of power spikes, but. You've got still clutch players available, and I mean that in in the sort of both versions of that word here. Nocturne uh, can, of course, get to that silent, and Demonte is three and zero on a Cinder who can one-shot people if the right person's not around, so there's still playmaking to be had. Yeah, and that's why I want to see Clutch trying to split the map, but Golden Guardian's pulling them to these neutral objectives. This is not where they're going to be able to succeed. Orn comes across, no knockouts, but Mountain Drake is already dead. Now, will you fight without the Orn ultimate, or will you give it up and go back to the mid lane? There's a wave on the tier two turret. Clutch could probably just rush that down and get some gold as payment for the Drake, and you can see them running over now. So with a sort of belated recall out of the Golden Guardian side, they should lose this turret. And honestly, tier two turret for Mountain Drake is a pretty reasonable trade. I'm not even sure that's a really positive for GGS. Yeah, now Clutch can actually try to bait, or at least Pretend they are going over towards that Baron pit. I do think that both teams need to start establishing vision around this Baron, especially with double mountain, double ocean on Golden Guardians. That means not only can you, you know, take poke from the Baron and heal that back up, you have the ability to really burn this down very quickly, not only with this three item Jinx, but Karthus, also one of the best champions at really shredding through the Baron, especially now with that Leandry's yep. done. So they're going to have to be very, very careful. And you can see in this area, there's no wards at all for Clutch. They have nothing in that vision. And I yeah, think it's going to be really department. scary for them to, to kind of check over at that barren area. Huni's down in the bot lane. He does have his TP available, but Golden Guardians could just start this and at least force the TP out of Huni. And that forces the blue trinket out. So now round two is more difficult because now what can you face check with? There's no Ash. Nocturne's going to make it really difficult to do anything. No TF. Vulcan 
Gets one Warden. He's definitely leaving, so that's enough for Clutch Gaming to feel safe. They can do more about this later on. Let's get in three men, but it's not, so they're just fine. Uh, yeah, as you mentioned, the vision wasn't there. It was Golden Guardians who were able to reset first. Clutch went, took the turret, took the red buff, then recalled after, so they are second to the play. Probably going to push the team off, but again, with the wave clear in mid being very obvious, it gives time to knock these wards down. They're all visible, and Clutch can feel a little bit safer. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised that Golden Guardians didn't try to force the issue a bit. They did instead reset Haunter, send him down to the bottom lane, but I think in that situation, you can start the Baron, not with the intention of finishing it, but just with the intention of getting Huni's teleport out. Because then you can send Haunter down to the bot lane, yeah, the and it's right no now. longer parity, and here they go for the engage. Once again, on to Ton Pence. They're going to find a little bit of something. It's going to be over the wall, goes early, but they got the re-engage on the other side of the map, and Contract finds the kill to Huni somehow, and this re-engage could be gorgeous for Golden Guardians. That's a second kill already. Piglet's Most trying definitely. in the back line, but the Zonias makes it really easy to stay alive, and Piglet gets hit yet again. Here comes the Requiem. Is he going to get away? The Flash gets him some space, but Lyra's going to drop as well. Three for zero. Golden Guardians have no spite to contest with. They can go right for the Baron. Yeah, this is going to be a very easy Baron here for Golden Guardians. Huni, no Aftershock. Not able to get a self-ultimate there. He just gets absolutely deleted after coming in on the GP. You know, no Zonya's even coming out. We'll have to see how he went down that fast. But Golden Guardian's full control now. Baron buff secured, and you have to feel like it's their game to lose. So let's watch this one more time. It was a good ward dropped in the lane for that flank TP, and they're certainly setting up well for it. Looks like it's going to be a good engage. Very well timed on the Devour right before he gets feared. Flash knockup over onto Huni. And he actually just straight up dies to Contract's ultimate, underestimating the damage that's going to be coming through. Did not sell fault, did not Sonya's. The resets come through. It's a full on retreat for Clutch as Jinx gets excited and is going to chase them down. And then no spell shield available here for Lyra. Gets absolutely popped. Clutch got wiped in that fight. Wasn't even close. Definitely got destroyed in this one. So it's even more onto Demonte to try to turn it around. Turns the. Uh, Dark Steel into a Magi Soul Stealer with the stacks he's got already. Can hope he can carry this as he does get out. But yeah, we are going to need a little bit more out of these players on Clutch Gaming side to turn this one around. As you mentioned, Golden Guardians have complete control here. The Gold Lead 4000, they've got four Drakes, they've got the Baron to help Siege. Okay, that one gets abducted and you know, that Siege is going to stop for a little while. And Hotzer should have a, an upgrade available for his team. He hasn't actually used it just yet, but could. You know, upgrade that. Oh. Booney maybe caught out here again. Chomp first, not quite gonna land. Actually, they weren't cast quite on him, so he's able to flash out of that and stay alive just barely. But the still, mid turret will fall. More of the base is falling apart. And that's a 4v5, right? You know, they have their Ornn in the bottom lane, and they are getting absolutely demolished here in the mid lane. Now one of their best engaged tools is gone. No Zonias, no flash on Hooney. And Ornn is still, meanwhile, chugging down into that bottom lane, pushing it up, looking to try to knock down a turret himself. Golden Guardian's gonna rotate down as a squad with this double cannon wave. And that's not gonna be the claw that gets taken, so Golden Guardians now know that they cannot have to be afraid of this one, and two more shots comes in, down goes on the turret, onto the inhibitor, this should be given up now, as Hurricane's also done, and Huni chunked the half by Deathly's rocket. That's a quick pickup there, bottom and hip is broken, next Drake spawns in 18. Yep, and it's gonna be another ocean, so triple ocean, double mountain. Gonna be the dragons that we will get on this one. Golden Guardian's just gonna head right over to mid lane, though. No reason to stop yet on this Baron power play. They haven't been tested whatsoever. You can see that Lyra and Vulcan trying to set up for a flank, but they've been spotted out by these wards. So Froggen just warding them off and trying to zone them out. Contract's working with him as well. Well, definitely just steps forward. Tom Kench behind him, Orn in front of him. He's got so much protection and the ability to constantly siege and poke with those rockets. They will, as the Molten Edge has been upgraded by Orn a second ago. So extra power spike coming in now for Deathly to be a slightly larger carry. And how can Clutch come in on this one? Still 40 seconds on the Baron buff, and Golden Guardians have not reset with their gold just yet. They're instead staying around. There's a root towards Orn, but he feels pretty durable. Damage towards Piglet. Only down one third of his HP. Real comes across. Not going to find a knockup either there as well. Who needs self votes? Low health bars, but over the wall they go. Looking for the re-engage. Not going to find it. One for zero. Golden Guardians yet again. Vulcan holds the front line, but for how long? The health bar is getting low. They finally get the kill on a Haunter. It's a 4v4. The Rockets do a lot in the back line, but definitely quite low as well. This time they find Connors. The ult's not going to find Purchase, but there's Requiem. It could be big, but it's oh. not any kills until the Rockets. 
Rocket turns back around on the support, but it's a three versus three. The storm has been weathered. Baron will time out, but Golden Garden is likely to receive that Drake. Yeah, really well played fight there from Clutch to hold on. Piglet getting so much damage down on Ponser, dodging out the Orn ultimate with his own ultimate, that killer instinct, and Syndra, you know, Demonte moving forward, throwing his ultimate down on Dempley, zoning him out so he cannot continue forward in that fight. And despite those great plays, it is still an even trade in the Dragon going over the way. But watch Ponser here on the side, taking a lot of damage from Piglet. Piglet trying to move forward pretty aggressively, then using the killer instinct back behind Ponser, getting him very, very low. And a really nice headbutt. That was intentional, knocking him back into the squad. Then flash, four-man pulverize there from Vulcan. You can see Demonta steps up and actually gets the ultimate down onto the Jinx, pushing him out of the fight and allowing them to then turn and kill off contracts. The fact that Lyra doesn't even die, despite the fact that Rexite committed Close. the goal to try to get that kill. Lyra, of course, healing up with Triumph and withstanding Requiem there. But it does mean MR needs to come in pretty soon for Clutch Gaming because Karthus is still powering up. Level 16 is next for him with an Ornn upgrade on the way pretty soon. Yeah, I mean, he's already at those three completed items. He's got 10 stacks on the Dark Seal. Uh, Jinx is working very quickly towards the Bloodthirster. And so, so strong at this point in the game. And definitely is sitting on the Flash, which is incredibly important for Jinx. Tom Kench also having Flash. You know, those are two things you really have to take into account. Knight's Vow is there. Locket is coming in. There's so much protection for this Jinx. It's hard to see, you know, how he can get taken down without, you know, miraculous play from Clutch or a serious misposition error from him. And as you saw, this game was pretty much neck and neck through the first 15 minutes. Slight laning phase lead to Clutch. The Ocean Drake certainly added up, but the kills were keeping it close. And then as team fights broke out, it just kind of broke away from them. And sadly, Clutch have a lot of work still to do. This was their easiest remaining match in the schedule, and they had to make stuff up to make the playoff run. This was the, what, fourth place finisher from the spring split. Had a rough summer, revamped roster, and it's sadly for them looking like more of the same as we start closing out the spring split of 2019. One yeah. of the new squads in LCS. And for Golden Guardians, you know, they have never made playoffs in, in their entirety. They have only finished tw twice in 10th, right? Yeah. So this is already a much better split than they have ever had. They're working towards those playoffs, and they are within reach. Driving a win year certainly would mean a lot to Golden Guardians playoff hopes. Golden Guardians only got seven wins all last year. This game would be number seven just partway through the single split. And they're one of the favorites to indeed make playoffs. They're tied for that fifth through seventh spot right now. And they would improve to alone at fifth for the time being with a win right here. And they're poised to do so. 6,000 gold ahead. Baron is back alive. And look at this vision. There's so little that Clutch can see. You can see the control wards, the regular wards sweeping these stuff out. Golden Guardians is going to make this an incredibly hard choice for Clutch to navigate. They've got to do so blind for most of this. Yeah, and that's Emerson. why, well, you know, Clutch has that midline priority, though. They're trying to use that as a way to get over to this pit. Puni has stuck around behind, so he is looking for a potential Miracle Flank. If he can get over the wall into the middle of all of these members, but he's spotted out by Tremor Sense, so should have been noticed over that wall. We'll see if Golden Guardians was watching that area and, and did that. actually spot him. That's the right play right there. With the bottom inhibitor dead, they know they can force Clutch to react because the game will end by itself. This will end without intervention, so something has to break. Something must give, and it's Clutch saying, you know what? We have to go back to our base. We must defend this. The waves will keep dying. And as those recalls come through, maybe they weren't spotted, but they do know what with seeing Huni here, that they can go right back onto the Baron, and indeed they will do so after the wave clear. But now it's a four versus five defense. Can they make this deal? Head flash to go onto the front line. Vulcan's gonna try, but not just yet. 2,000 on the Baron, baiting out the fight, forcing the TP. There's the headbutt, the pulverize, the ult burned as well, but it's an easy disengage. Golden Guardians, triple ocean. They can weather this forever and walk right back to the base. And look at the mini map here. Minions in the base in multiple locations being able to, to knock away at those inhibitors. That was the TP from Huni. And Golden Guardians is just making the rush over to the inhibitor. They're just going to try to knock it straight down. That's the kind of Baron you want to see from a team that wants to make playoffs, wants to improve this year. That was the right play. Go. It forces it out of Clutch Gaming. Lyra in the front line. Piglet to join. Can they find the kill? They shut down one. They shut down two. Ornhorn comes across for double knockups. And they get two right back for it. It's a 3v3 on the map. But the map state, of course, still catastrophic. There's still dead inhibitors and minions flooding in. Yeah, Froggen and Contract split off from the rest of the team, and they are made to pay for it as Piglet is able to get that shutdown onto Froggen, a big one for him. 
But this three-man squad from GGS is certainly incredibly strong, and Piglet may be going oh, down nice. here. Knock up Jinx Rocket! One more shot, he's almost got him! But Hans is gonna stay alive, a quick long-range shot lands, Demonte a bit low as well, and of course, Ole should still have Devour. There should not be an assassination attempt, and you can see the ult not committed. They know it would mean nothing. And the regen is gonna be kicking in here for Haunts or Triple Ocean. You can see those health bars ticking up. They're heading over to the sixth dragon of the game for them. Yeah. Cloud will be the last one coming out. It's been a while since I've seen six. Five is normally the most you ever get yeah. to before Elder, but this would be a monstrous Elder Dragon if they get there. And I believe six is the most you can get of elementals yep. because of how long it takes to respawn. You can't kill them in zero seconds flat, so very powerful in this regard. As watch that 5v5 from earlier. Yeah, here this is one more time. You can see the two members sectioned off from Golden Guardians a little bit far up away from the remaining members of the squad, but due to the massive gold lead, they can still turn around and take the fight. The Jinx ult knocking down one, Karthus ultimate knocking down Lyra. It is the two for two. They do get the inhibitor in the extended trade. Clutch just fighting such an uphill battle, even with great engages, even with great plays in these fights. Mm -hmm. They are taking 5v5s in which their champions are outclassed, and they are certainly down in gold. Oh, they're gonna find another fight here on a contract. Guardian Angel popped, and Hanser has to watch out for this one. Ole far away. This is certainly gonna be a kill on the Rex side. Tries to tunnel over, but no. The Kathian Rain is gonna knock that one down. 5v4 Clutch have maybe started him out the comeback. Yeah, an incredible job, honestly, from Clutch finding these picks, finding these split offs. And they're gonna go in for the engage. They're gonna try 5v4, they got the stun, they're gonna try to burn down Karthus and they get it. So now it is a 5v3, Golden Guardians had the control and they get that single kill, but definitely must be the carry. Ultimate. Rocket, oh, it's not gonna find Piglet, not by the hair of his chinny chin chin. He's gonna get away and now, Golden Guardians, do they feel comfortable sieging a 4v3? What a play, definitely doing the heavy lifting in the long range late game. 3v3 onto the map, but there's no smite for them. Lyra has it. Do they feel like they can zone the squad out and go for Baron anywhere? They're gonna try. Yeah, they see Lyra on the map just now as he is over by those minions. They can rush this down so incredibly fast with the Jinx. I think it's gone before he can even get in range. Yeah. Definitely taking the game into his hands there. Flash, Rocket, the Zap coming through. He picks up the kill. And that high attack speed ramping up the Zap cast time in this late game. That is a big play for him to make. Definitely has been starting to index towards defensive stats, so he doesn't get one shot by that Syndra. The, the one chance in is killing the Jinx, and Bloodthirster is a gigantic shield. He's already running over heal. That Hex Drinker is going to be really crucial in that one as well, as the Magi's is stacking up to 14. Demonte is getting more powerful, though. He definitely is, and you do have to say, despite that being a great play, he is now flashless. That is the window in for Clutch. That is their you know, saving grace, so to speak. They have to be looking at this Jinx, trying to get on top of him, trying to be able to delete him at the start of the fight, and then maybe, just maybe, you can make something happen. A lot of the focus in these last couple fights, though, has been on Krogan, who is playing without Azonias, and that is pretty standard. A lot of the best Karthus players are okay utilizing that passive, dying off at the start of the fight, and continuing to pump out damage, but they may want to try to swap that over to definitely now that he has no flash. About 800 gold till Frog can finish his death cap. The Baron, of course, on most of these players, but not all. And we watch an early fight, a start of fight. Requiem gets some decent oh, damage Piglet. out of Cross and Piglet. Yes, quite a bit low. Trying to lifesteal back up, but has very little for that. Only the Vamp Scepter, as he's down to about one third, and it means that he's going to continue. Demonte's at half, and that's going to be him burning his flash. The rocket comes across. A nice knock up there. Redemption buys some time, though. Inhibitor still going to drop. This could be the push right now. They've still got minions, and only a single turret. The shots come through. Clutch Gaming must stop them. The turret's already gone. On towards the Karthus, but he can't keep the fear. On the front line, Alistair's already dead, and it's 5v4 without a front line. What can Piglet do? The damage might just just not be there. Golden Guardians are going to tie their wins for the entire last year as Huni pops the Zonias, finds a single stun, but they don't even kill Froggen. There's the death at the top later. There's another kill as well as Piglet has dropped, and Golden Guardians will indeed do it. They will find their seventh win. They'll pad the KDA, and for now, they remain in playoff position. Very strong game here from Golden Guardians as they'll grab one more kill before finishing off the Nexus. 9, 0, and 5 from Deathly, stepping up when they needed it, getting that big kill onto Huni that let them get that final bear and close out this game. But it felt like they were in full control the whole way through, had the scaling edge in the 5v5, were able to get those early Ocean Dragons to help them through the laning phase. And I think they played this one out very, very well.
Nine zero and five hundred or thousand gold bounty onto him. Really good stuff out of that jinx in the bottom lane. Not a lot of champions banned away, but they got rid of some of the aggro ones like Callista and said, "All right, from here I can scale." They bullied the lane. They got the pressure. They got the drakes because of the lane shove. They got plates because of it as well. And that two on two, it's. It's been a lane that's had some really heavy ups and downs. Ole smile on his face, he's part of that one. But this was a laning win from the bottom lane and a team fight win from the bottom lane as well. Certainly the case. And you have to say that Lissandra really never got the edges that you would want from a range versus tank matchup. And Huni went for Klepto. He was never able to really get ahead and farm over Hauntzer. Certainly a big part of that is the Ocean Dragon being able to sustain through that. But credit to Hauntzer playing it out well in the laning phase, not giving up any major edges whatsoever, and then being effective in that team fight stage, it felt like he was able to create so much pressure by zoning for the rest of the carries, allowing them time to get their work done. So Golden Guardians now only a game and a half behind FlyQuest at fourth. They cannot catch TSM at third, but a fourth seed would be, of course, better standings overall in this playoff run. Uh, of course, we can still see CLG, Optic, and maybe a couple other teams try to catch them here in this playoff race as well. That's still to be played, but Golden Guardians sitting at seven wins with two to play. It does seem like we've expected for maybe the last couple of months that they're playoff bound at this point. They have generally felt pretty solid overall. This was fairly close. There were some good team fight movements in the middle for Clutch Game, but overall, Golden Guardians were the better team on the day. And now for more on that victory, I'll be standing by with the victorious top laner. Thanks, Freak. Hanser, congratulations on the win. Now, you guys, so we saw once again a team fight comp coming out for Golden Guardians. So what makes that comp work so well with your team? Um, after yesterday, we had like a huge discussion like our comp didn't really make sense. We couldn't fight that well together. And so going into today, we wanted to make sure we could win those team fights. And um, we felt like that was the easiest way for us to play the game. And it worked out. It did work out. I mean, those triple ocean drakes definitely helped too. But I wanted to draw a little bit of attention to, the, to you in the top lane because there were some questionable Orin ults going on. So what happened there? Uh, well, Orn wasn't a pick I practiced a lot, but I felt it was a good situation. And yeah, I, I whiffed a few ulties. I felt bad. It was pretty embarrassing, especially the one on top, top tower. That was like probably the worst one. People still love you. Some of us were scratching our heads, but regardless, with this win, you guys are sitting in a pretty position to kind of make playoffs. Next weekend, I believe you have Optic and FlyQuest as your opponents, and those are going to be some good matches. What do you think about your chances? I think our our chances are almost like 100%. Like, uh, next week, our, our, the t our opponents, um, they're also in a very similar position to us, but I feel we'll have the edge. Well, Hanser, thank you, and wishing you and Golden Guardians best of luck in perhaps getting to your guys' first playoffs. And that's it for us here. Let's hear from the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you very much, Avli. Confidence coming out of the Golden Guardians squad as their playoff picture looks better and better with this win here over Clutch Gaming. Let's talk about the team compositions. Avli tossed the question over to him. Why is it the team fighting comps work mm -hmm. so well for this squad? Uh, but more so what I'm interested in is how these two team comps ultimately interact when we get to that phase of the game. I do also want to go back to the point you mentioned, why teams go back to team fighting comp. All the time, if you can never make it past the early, past the mid game, any part you ever struggle, the answer, pick a team fighting comp and then everything is so much easier because the solution is simply figure out how to team fight as opposed to how do we manage multiple lanes? How do we manage objectives with a split push or with a poke? Just team fight, it's so easy. I feel like they're making a mistake if they're trying to pick like a Nocturne, Lissandra kind of comp. Those are very good at picking one person off in a team fight. If you're gonna do that, you should try and drop a ban on Tom Kench. You see time and time again that teams keep picking Tom Kench to keep their AD carry alive or their mid laner alive. And that's a very strong thing for those teams. So get the Tom Kench out of there, and then you can have these strong dive comps. Yeah, and it was especially for Ole. I think it's by far his best champion in the split. And I think, yeah, another great game on it, making sure that he was always the target of their engages, or he was saving Jinx the few times they did look at her. All right, let's take a look at how Lear did in the early game. A couple ganks coming out for him. Uh, but I know we had some criticisms as well in where he chose to throw some of his attention. Yeah, this is such a hard dive to follow off in the ball. And you saw Vulcan have to go on to Tom Kench immediately to try and separate it so the Nocturne could kill the Jinx. But this was extremely telegraphed. They've been hovering down around around there for a while, and it's such a strange position to spend your first Nocturne ultimate, and when it's so much easier to go mid. Yeah, mid is so free, and best of all, they had so much vision elsewhere that I feel like this lane is just 
it's so easy. Look, if you're playing Nocturne and you've got Red Smite, you can one-shot Karthus on your own if you catch him, because you know Froggen is taking your chickens. You gotta protect the coop, man. Protect them chickens. I mean, so that was the that was the first time we saw that play happen. But in actuality, it could have been the second time if or, he had used that first ultimate towards the mid lane the you, first time. You're around. so free in the vision red side. All you need to do is just wait. Okay, they've left this area. I can literally ult mid from here. Go for a dive. Karthus doesn't have an exhaust. You can tower dive. You have a spell shield to actually get you on the way out. Syndra can practically solo it. You always have to think of what is the easiest lane to gank, like for you to kill and do damage, as opposed to what makes more sense for what my team is asking or what my team thinks we should do. It's like, no, I got to think for myself first. <laughs> Where do, can I get an advantage? Yeah, without a doubt. Hi, now I want to dive into the point you were making, which was some of the questionable targetization of, uh, uh, of champions here from Clutch onto the Golden Guardians. We'll see it in our first replay here in the... Uh, man, that's not correct. I didn't get a hit that one. Boom. Yeah, oh, here look. we go. Hi, Hi's got it for me. Right. There we so, go, buddy. He understands better than I do. Like we Boom. said earlier, you can't really engage onto the back line because Tom Kent eats them, but that doesn't mean you engage on the Tom Kent here. And Mark had a really big point that he wanted to bring up here. Yeah, look at the timing on this Tom Kench Devour. It's right after the Lissandra starts casting her ultimate. And if you are able to kind of disjoint that in the middle of the cast, it actually puts on a short cooldown and it doesn't go off. So they lose the potential AOE damage. The CC is not going to go through. And now Huni can't self ult himself. So it's just basically an ultless Lissandra flank gets blown up. And from there, they're able to turn this fight around very quickly. And this is to High's point about you probably just should have altered the Tom Kench because you know he's going to devour the... Even if you got the cast off, you're still going to I'm going to one-up that go back to the point. You got to ban that Tom Kench because you know <laughs> yeah. Olay has been feeding on a few other picks. <laughs> Get him off Tom Kench. He's doing work. Right, and it's just... You, you'll watch throughout this entire game. They had about six-ish engages where Nocturne ulties onto Olay, and it hasn't panned out for them once. There was one time he did ulti Karthus, you know, that's where we showed earlier, and they got the kill. Yeah. Why don't you just keep doing that instead of trying to go for this Tom Kench that is actually really hard to kill? And later on, there's going to be a replay that actually shows that as well. They get a free pick onto Contracts, and then instead of going towards the Baron, they once again ulti onto Olay and try and pick him again. Why do you not just get the free jungle kill right here, come back to Baron, Force GGS to come over to you. One, they might not be willing to because they don't want to take a 4v5. Two, if they do, you get a better engaging fight. And three, if they don't, you just get a free Baron. But I think instead, they're like, hey, we got to kill. Let's kill people. Let's kill, 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 kill. And the Baron would have been so beautiful because you have to always utilize the utility that Nocturne brings to Paranoia. You're dropping a thing that says you can't even look where you want to see. Come into the pit now. Do you want to take a fight? It blind and that's so difficult we already saw today how hard it is to go into baron against the nocturne you have these tools in your hand and i just think that clutch is tunnel visioning way too much on getting an engage against the tom kench as opposed to taking the path of least resistance yeah i think you can see the objective focus out of golden guardians coming out much more useful the fact that they grabbed all five of those drakes early on despite not really having pressure the fact that contracts died level two in the early game sort of put them behind but they still came out ahead way